So Vicki and I are getting ready to take off for the weekend, just her and I. But first things first. I gotta get you all trimmed up. After I got my tune up, I went out to the shop to see how things are going out there. I need to make sure the 64 is ready to roll because we're headed to West Virginia in about an hour. And I wanted to make sure that Kenny Powers had plenty of work to do while we're gone. He's gonna work on cleaning up the Malibu, detailing it and putting a new radiator in it, as well as some routine maintenance on the Suburban. The engine transmission and rear differential needs serviced and it needs this red bat removed from the grill. Anyway, since the 64 doesn't have a stereo in it, I got Vicky's speaker out of her office and a playlist all set up so we can lay that thing on the dash and hope that June Pup doesn't realize I'm leaving without her. Don't do anything I wouldn't do while I'm gone. Can we go now? Yeah, we're, I was ready 20 hours ago. And then you go getting on the phone, talking to... It was Jimmy Dale. I know, when you're on the phone with Jimmy Dale, that's... I'm ready to go. And now it's raining, my hair's gonna get messed up. So the time has finally come. I've got to sit June Pup down and explain to her she's not coming with me. Once I got that out of the way, we went out and fired up the 64, and Vicky and I finally got to hit the road. And luckily this time we've got a little traveling music, which is gonna be really nice on this four and a half hour drive from our house in Ohio to our Airbnb down in Durban, West Virginia. We made it as far as the Ohio-West Virginia state line, crossed the Ohio River, and then stopped to get fuel at a little rest area just across the bridge in Williamstown. So far, so good. No problems with the truck, and so far this trip has been uneventful. The plan is to stay the night in this little Airbnb house down in Durban and then get up tomorrow morning and ride this train ride. Vicky's got this deal all planned out. She's taken care of getting the Airbnb house, the train ride tickets, and even planned the entire route down to Durban. The house looked really good online. Now we get to see exactly what we've bought into. This tiny little house is definitely cozy, and luckily it's also very clean. There's a front bedroom and a back bedroom. The railroad one in the back was perfect for me to sit down and do some editing for a little while without bothering Vicky. But once I got my editing done, I took a little tour of the place and checked everything out, and by that time, Miss Vicky had made quite a mess in the living room. When I walked into the living room, she had stuff scattered all over the place. Clothing, snacks, all kinds of stuff. Now we're only staying here one night. I couldn't understand why she would want to scatter this stuff all over the place and make such a mess. What are you doing? Oh, you're blinding me. You trashed the whole house already. What? We've only been here like an hour and you've got everywhere, all over the inside of the house. laid out on the table out there that's not messing it up that's being prepared I have our outfits already set out I already have the charger plugged in and guess what I'm doing I'm figuring out how many hours it is from here to where the crate motors are so I should be getting praise sure as shit if she keeps this up she's gonna forget something someplace but one thing she won't forget is the details written down in this book in the house. I told her I was gonna do a headboard check before I come to bed, but she wasn't impressed. Do not put that in the video. <laughs> Thursday morning, we got to wake up and see Durban, West Virginia with our own eyes. The little house we stayed in is 20 feet off the edge of the river, and it's only about 100 feet away from the train station where we could hear the locomotive getting ready to make its first run down the tracks. The first run is scheduled to leave the station at about 10 a.m. and it's due back just about noon. So that gives us just enough time to run uptown with a pickup truck and get some breakfast at the local diner. If you plan on going to station two for breakfast like we did, you enter the restaurant through the nail salon. That little detail threw us for a loop for a few minutes, but the end result was a really good breakfast. Anyway, after we got done eating, we had just enough time to go hop in the 64 and go take a little drive and do some exploring. We found this bridge only about 500 feet up the road from our little Airbnb house. And it seemed like the perfect opportunity to take a little bit of video with the drone. It's kind of funny, after all these years of her raising hell with me about buying remote control trucks, finally, 
my remote control skills are coming in kind of handy. Anyway, we spent about an hour driving up and down the back roads there around Durban. We managed to make it back to our Airbnb house just about the same time that the locomotive pulled back into the station. Vicky and I were out back checking out the scenery and the river just about the time we heard the whistle and the bell ringing up at the station. We went ahead and got the house all cleared out, put our luggage back in the truck, and got a parking spot along Main Street behind the railroad station. Vicki and I wanted to go check things out before the train leaves for our ride in about an hour. As usual with anything, maintenance is important, and they've got their own little maintenance shop sitting out back, where they keep this diesel electric as a backup engine in case they need to run down the tracks and retrieve some cars without having to fire up the steam engine. Our tickets were for the afternoon ride that leaves the station at about 2.15, and that's exactly when we departed Durban on the Durban rocket. The engine leaves town in reverse, pushing the cars backwards down the tracks and dropping off cabooses along the sidings that people can rent for the weekend and camp overnight in along the tracks. We were told tickets become available in January and they're literally sold out for the entire year in just a few minutes. This was one of two cars that we dropped off on sidings along the river. After their overnight stay, the locomotive comes back tomorrow to bring them back to the station. Anyway, it took about an hour to run down the tracks and offload the two cabooses on the sidings. Then it was time to head back up river towards town. By this time, the sun was starting to set low enough that when you got down in the valley, it got pretty chilly. But the view was definitely worth the trip. On the way back up towards town, we stopped by this little creek to refill the hopper with water. They leave this hose in the creek and then attach it to the steam engine, which evidently has its own pump. The process only takes about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we're back underway. The last stretch track up through the river valley got pretty cold, so Vicky and I went back into the enclosed car and got warm next to the wood burner. And that's where we finished out the rest of the ride. All right, Squirrel, you've had your train ride. You ready to head to South Carolina? Yes. You got your directions pulled up? I do. The right ones? Yes. So with our train ride over, Vicki and I hop into 64, and now we head down to South Carolina. It feels like we've had this truck for three or four years, but in reality, it's only been nine months since I went down to Tennessee, picked the truck up and brought it home. And that's when this entire project started. The truck was built to do specifically what we're doing right now. We replaced the original six cylinder and three speed with a 350 and a 700 R4, installed new wheels, tires, brakes, vintage AC, all new interior, rebuilt the rear axle and replaced the wood bed floor. And although this project is far from done, it's definitely good enough to take it out and enjoy it the way it is right now. And I'll be quite honest, I don't think it gets much better than crossing over from West Virginia into Virginia with your wife behind the wheel of an old Chevy pickup. By sunset, Vicky and I were starting to get pretty hungry. So we mapped out directions to a Texas roadhouse and pointed the old 64 in that direction. Well, Squirrel, how was your day today? Excellent. Did you have fun? Very much. It so. was nice. We didn't have any goals or... No schedule. No schedule. No schedule, no destination, really. Like, just drive. We're just running amok. Running amok in a southward direction, but no real time frame. So we're here at Texas Roadhouse now. We're going to get dinner. Yep. And then what are we going to do? We're going to look for a hotel room? We'll probably drive maybe another hour or two and then get a hotel. You get a hotel? Yep. I'm for tired. For now, we eat. For now, we eat. What are you getting? Ribs. Ribs? 
That's not pot roast. No, that's Sunday. Oh. That's Sunday. We left Texas Roadhouse last night and drove as far as Rocky Top, Virginia and got a hotel room. But Friday morning, housekeeping was ready for us to leave. After a couple of reminders, we got the hint. So while housekeeping's making their rounds like the Gestapo, Vicky decides to get even. What are you doing? Borrowing some You're not borrowing, you're stealing it. You're dumping it all over the place. I'm pretty sure everybody in the hallway can hear her into this ice machine. Housekeeping. But for some reason, we have to whisper while we create a thousand decibels of noise, stealing ice. That's right. Is it a good hair day? For me, yes. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> so with our cooler packed full of stolen ice, the mischievous Miss Vicky heads to the lobby. The only problem is she was in such a hurry to steal ice, she forgot her Bluetooth speaker in the room. To the beach. At this moment in time, she's about 15 minutes from realizing that. Anyway, we fire up the 64 and head straight to the gas station, clean the windshield, top off the fuel tank, and we hit the road for another five and a half hour drive down through Virginia into North Carolina, and finally into South Carolina to go pick up Vicky's new short block. Now, I met the man that has this engine at Rockingham at Digger Die a couple of years ago, and I remember him telling me he had a stash of 400 small block engines brand new in the crate. At the time, I really didn't believe him. People say a lot of crazy things to us at the events, and to find one, let alone two, brand new 400 small blocks that are 42 years old still in the factory crate you'd have to be a legit treasure hunter to find something like that. Unless your name's Victor Reitzel, AKA Paw Paw. Oh, hi. Hi, <laughs> how are you? You are just adorable, oh my gosh. Oh, very cute. <laughs> my baby girl. How cute. What's your name? What's your name? Now, obviously, I had to get the lowdown on how these two engines came to be here. There was a place out in Arizona. It was a, an RV place. What is it, the RV? Oh, RV place. RV place. So, um, they had a lot of these here motors that was left over. Because they, instead of changing the whole motor, they just did short blocks. And they do the heads and, you know, put it back together. So, everything turned into the, what do you call the new motors? Um, the Vortex. The Vortex. So the Vortex came out, kind of took the place of it. So they said, well, this is old stock, discontinued. So next thing you know, it was on the internet, had a bunch of these things for sale. So being the treasure hunter that I am, <laughs> they had X amount left and I got them. Oh, yeah. And so I just stored them away and kept them. And then in my mind, I said, when I retire, I'll just go ahead and build you know, these motor race motors down the road for people and stuff, but then they came out with all these nice fancy blocks and mm -hmm. this, that, and the other, and I'm like, well, I kind of put a kink in that, you know. <laughs> but that's okay, but then, you know, it's still treasure that it's not made anymore. For sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Wow. It turns out Victor Reitzel has been into drag racing for a very long time, and he and I are both very fond of the old small block Chevy engines. We hung out in the shop for a little while and he explained to me some of his roots and where he came from and the cars he's been involved with. And evidently watching our family no prep race has inspired his family to build their own no prep car, a Nova, almost identical to Billy's. We hung out in the shop and talked for quite a while and then it was time to hand out our payment for these two 400 small blocks. Vicky brought cookies for everybody. Well, especially Miss Victoria. She was in charge of handing them out. 
Once we had our payments taken care of, it was time to back the old 64 up to the shop door and get these two small block Chevys loaded up. Now, originally, I had only intended to come down and pick up one for the 64, but since there's two of them available, I figure it's a good idea to bring the second one home for mom and dad's 55 Chevy, which will free up the 327 for Uncle Bucko's 36 Chevy Coupe project. I couldn't be more thankful to Victor and his family for this opportunity. I can't hardly wait to get home and get started putting these engines together. We'll head home tomorrow morning, but first, tonight we're gonna go out to dinner with Victor and his family at their favorite local restaurant, this Japanese steakhouse. Now, when I was little, my mom and dad taught us never to play with our food, and we were definitely taught not to play with fire. So I wasn't exactly sure how this deal was about to turn out, but it was really good food, probably some of the best steak I've ever had. Definitely wouldn't have been my pick to go to, but I'm thankful that Victor and his family brought us here because it was really, really good despite not having any A1 sauce. Anyway, after dinner, Vicki and I got a hotel room and settled in for the night, which is where I'm at right now, editing the end of this video. All right, guys, so <laughs> Vicki's over here snoring. She's sawing logs behind me. And uh, we're gonna head home tomorrow uh, in the morning, late morning, most likely, given the fact that it's probably almost three o'clock in the morning right now, and I'm still editing. Vicky's asleep. <laughs> Can you hear her back there? <laughs> this is kind of rough doing this on the road. <laughs> but anyway, thank you to Victor and his family. Such an incredible opportunity. I can't wait to get home and get started on these engines. We're gonna build one for Vicky's 64 and one for mom and dad's 55. And with a little bit of luck, we're gonna take them up to Uncle Bob's, the machine shop, put them on the dyno, dyno them, and maybe run a few dyno tests on different carburetors, you know, the ATM carburetors I've got up there. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I know Uncle Bob is too, so. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this video up tonight, guys. I'm gonna try and get some sleep, but I still gotta finish this video and get it uploaded and uh, get back on the road tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. See y'all later. Mm -hmm.